Nah, dude. I was up camping at the Mogollon Rim, and the black bears up there, dude, they're super used to people. That's why I got to keep this 308 pistol handy. Psst, whatever, man. I went fishing up in Kodiak, and they got some nuclear-powered nuclear bears, bears up there. <laughs> no, but, man, there's no freaking way that puny little 30 cal can cut it. That's why I wear my big boy pants and I rock this 4570 thumper. Yeah, well, I'm going on safari and there's no way in hell that that five shot lever action is going to have enough firepower to defend against a pack of lions, dude. Okay, fine, but what about dinosaurs? Okay, can we try to be realistic? Are you high? What the shit? What's up, party people? Thank you for joining me here at Cowtown in sunny Phoenix, Arizona for another ARFCOM review. What I've got here in my greasy little mitts is a Springfield Armory St. Victor pistol chambered in 308. It's a handy little beastie, and I'm going to make lots of pews and tell you what I think about her. But first, I want to tell you about the low-fat, sugar-free night vision products available at TNVC.com. Not only do they have the absolute best prices on night vision devices, they also have the mounts, lights, and other gear to make you the bump in the night. This little gal is as handy as all get out with a 10.3 inch melanited 1 in 10 twist barrel. Let's get something out of the way right up front. While dropping mighty 762 bombs from a short barrel is certain to make new friends at the range. I want to put to bed any comments about how pointless 762 NATO is from a short barrel right up front. It is true that a short barrel produces less velocity than a longer barrel. There's no getting around that point. But that's true in any caliber, and it isn't as though it turns the bullets into nerf darts. If there's enough interest, maybe I'll do a gel test with this little cutie in the future, but we can just look at the velocity numbers to get a pretty good idea of performance. The muzzle velocity is still well above the threshold where the temporary stretch cavity tends to exceed the elastic limit of tissue and produces permanent tears. And it should stay above that 2000 FPS mark until at least 125 yards, depending on the ammo you're using. It's also fast enough that most well-designed projectiles should still expand. Put another way, the muzzle velocity on this 10 and a half inch 308 is still higher than what you could expect for the same bullet weight in 762 by 39 when fired from a 16 inch barrel. For that matter, standard 147 grain M80 is only a little slower from this barrel than 124 grain 762 by 39 fired from a 16 inch barrel. And despite my distaste for commie guns and calibers, even I have to admit 7.62x39 is pretty baller in regard to tissue damage at close range with the right projectile. If that isn't enough for you, then consider the muzzle velocity produced by this pistol is roughly equivalent to what you'd see at about 250 yards if you fired the same ammo from a 24 inch barrel. So if you're trying to tell me about how useless 308 is from a 10 and a half inch barrel, does that mean you think the maximum effective range on an M14 is 250 yards or that an AKM is useless? Of course not. Does this barrel length produce maximum performance for this caliber? Well, no. Is this caliber the most efficient choice for this barrel length? Also no. And finally, is this setup ideal for long range? Again, no. But it is a handy little blaster that's got more than enough mojo to put in work at any defensive distance you are likely to be able to justify in port. The Victor line this pistol is a part of comes equipped with a variety of accessories that might be aftermarket add-ons for other companies. I have mixed feelings on that myself. If the accessories they choose match what you would have chosen, it's a great deal, saving you time and money. But if any one of them isn't your favorite, you essentially bought an accessory that you'll never use. 
Opinions vary, but I think the choices they made are pretty solid. Starting at the muzzle, the two-piece blast diverter looks basically like a muzzle brake inside a little can. It's intended to, well, divert the muzzle blast downrange. Now I couldn't do a side-by-side -side comparison with another muzzle device, so I can't tell you how effective it is at the job, but I can say all the fire and commotion comes out the loud end, and it does seem to be doing what it's supposed to. Now I'm partial to the skinny style of handguards that's become fashionable in recent years, and this skinny Midwest Industries M-Lock handguard is no exception. I like that it only has a short section of pick rail out front, making it comfortable to use the thumb over the top C-clamp grip, and the hand stop is a nice touch too. I'm a pretty average 71 inches tall, and I have to stretch a bit to get my phalanges out in front of the barrel, but I absolutely could do it, so the hand stop ought to help keep me, my digits on this side of the firing line. The bolt is high pressure tested and magnetic particle inspected, which dramatically reduces the odds of your bolt shearing a lug. And both the bolt and carrier are melanited, which improves corrosion resistance, reduces friction, and makes the bolt carrier group a whole lot easier to clean. It comes with one 20 round Gen 3 PMAG. The trigger is a flat faced, snazzy looking number, which Springfield describes as GI, but while the pull weight may be about right for a GI trigger, it is quite a lot crisper than most other GI triggers I've shot. I have mounted a Primary Arms Cyclops and Primary Arms 3X magnifier to evaluate the Saint, and I'll be covering the Cyclops in another video, but this combo makes a lot of sense to me. The Cyclops is a 1X prism sight with a chevron-shaped reticle, which allows a great deal of precision, especially when paired with the 3X magnifier. But with the magnifier flipped to the side, the Cyclops is every bit as fast as a reflex sight, and the new green model is crazy bright. The pistol grip is a BCM Gunfighter Mod 3, which has a handy little storage compartment for Skittles and ibuprofen. It has a QD socket in the receiver end plate and a heavy carbine length tungsten weighted buffer. Finally, it has an SB Tactical SBA3 pistol brace bringing up the rear. Maybe you noticed chatter recently about F Troop's opinion on pistol braces. Now, I don't want to get way out into the weeds, but as I'm recording this, nothing has really changed and pistol braces in general are still legal, even though the ATF has hinted they'd be willing to press charges in certain circumstances. That said, Maybe it isn't altogether unreasonable to ask whether a pistol brace on a monster like this is even manageable. After all, pistol braces are intended to make it safe to shoot a gun like this one-handed. Is it even feasible to shoot a fully semi-automatic 308 with one hand? Remember, the 68 GCA defines a pistol as a weapon originally designed, made, and intended to fire a projectile when held in one hand. So, let's try to make some pews. you should but you can okay so maybe that isn't exactly shocking i mentioned earlier the muzzle velocity on this is comparable to an akm and this gun weighs almost eight and a half pounds i'm dummy thick so of course i can manage it and yeah it also handles well in a variety of other shooting positions bottom line this gun is a beast it looks rad and would be a practical choice for a number of applications, but none of that overshadows the fact that it's fun and it's okay to buy guns just because you want to. At an MSRP of 14 hundo, it may sound spendy, but consider it is packed full of extras that would normally be aftermarket accessories, the build quality is superb, and it's not like there are a lot of other options out there for an AR-10 based pistol. Would I buy this for myself if I had the scratch? You bet. I really don't want to send this one back. I hope you enjoyed watching this video because I sure enjoyed making it for you. If you want to help us keep bringing you banger content like this, please support the folks who support us. Not only does TNVC.com carry a wide selection of low carb, fat free, non-GMO night vision products, they also have mounts, lights, and all sorts of other gear to make you the bump in the night. And if you want to support us more directly, you can buy fly shirts like this one in our Teespring store. Or, if you'd like to try your luck and see if you can win your choice of rad shirt from our Teespring store, post a comment containing the phrase, clever girl, in the YouTube comments, and I will arbitrarily and unilaterally choose the best one.
I love you.